Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile video, and this time it is going to be on the Ritual Beast deck that I've been testing for the past week or so for post-Raging Tempest format. Basically, Zodiac Beast format. This is a different kind of zoo, if you're uh, into that sort of nonsense. But basically, I made a, du a uh, dual video a couple days back playing Ritual Beasts, or at least a variant of Ritual Beasts that I was testing, and uh, basically said in that video that if the video got 500 likes that I would share the deck list and do some more dual videos with it because people seem to like Ritual Beasts as far as content goes. Now the video didn't get to 500 likes unfortunately, it got to about like 350-ish area, or like a little bit less than that, but still, that is a very large improvement over anything else that I've put out over the past couple of weeks, it's basically over triple what my videos like, like ratios usually are. And so basically, I felt like it was something that I could do as just like a little thanks to uh, to the people that supported that video to give out a deck list because I didn't put a deck list in that video. But also, I was testing this deck for a regional that I was going to be going to literally today at the time of me filming this video. But changes and plans happened and I ended up not going to that regional. So ultimately, I'm probably not going to play this deck at an event because hopefully by the next regional and by YCS Land, I have access to real zoo cards. I don't know. It depends. It depends on what uh, what happens there. But anyway, the deck list is triple Conahawk, triple Rampangu, one Apelio, and one Petalfin just for names. And then two copies of uh, Winda. I see a lot of people liking to play one of this, but I actually really like two because once you do get two into circulation, you have access into tagging out your fusions into two Windas at the same time. And that is just a huge layer of uh, protection that you have to basically guarantee your steeds are going to be resolving for the turn. Um, so stuff like that. Two copies of Zephyr and Pilica. Even though I'm not playing Brilliant Fusion in this build, I've got a version with Brilliant Fusion and a version like this, this one. Um, and I like the one that doesn't have Brilliant Fusion in it a bit more just because it seems to be a little bit less like Bricky. Uh, two copies of Zephyr and Pilica to be searched off Oracle of Zephyr still seems to work rather well um, just because of its ability to recur your graveyard resources and stuff like that. So it's definitely something that I do still like playing the little mini package of Oracle of Zephyr with Zephyr and Pilicas and the Fusion, or not Fusion, the Field Spells. But one copy of Wind to be a name, three copies of Elder because it's the best one to open with, and then one copy of Laura to be a name because it's essentially just a worse Pilica, and then two Maxis in the main deck. For spells, the one Emergency Teleport that I'm allowed to play, one Brain Research Lab, and one Oracle of Zephyra with three Terraformings. Basically, you really don't mind opening multiples of these because literally any multiple combination of two of any of these five cards basically allows you to do Oracle of Zephyra to search for Pilica and then Brain Research Lab to basically turn Pilica into an Elder. So, I mean, it's it's a pretty good little mini engine that ultimately is something that I think has to be played in this deck so that you can improve consistency as far as getting opening plays, especially since you have a much higher count of, like, beasts that you can use in the form of having Winda addition, like, to the card pool that you can uh, that you can basically use Brain Research Lab as, uh, as stuff to do there, especially since Winda can be summoned off Brain Research Lab and you can then summon a beast. Like, Winda's ability to be both the beast and the tamer is actually just a huge, uh, huge asset towards this card being better for the deck. Uh, but yeah, so any any combination of two of these is fine, so you don't really care about opening multiples, and that's why the terraformings are maxed, because you definitely want to see at least Brain Research Lab so that you can start getting some combo plays going. Uh, one Upstart, one Foolish, one Rageki, one Book of Moon, and a Defissure for one ofs. You know, Upstart, just consistency. Rageki is just a good going second card, a board wipe. Book of Moon is also a really good going second card against uh, Drancia's, or I guess I should call it Dryden't, it's TCG name now. But also it's a trap that you could go first and set, and is equally as good there. So there's going to be a lot more potential play for Book of Moon in the future because it's a really versatile card, and that's one of those things that you really want in Yu-Gi-Oh! And then Dimensional Fissure is obviously because it just contributes to your combos as well as basically shutting down a lot of the main decks in the format. But for traps, three steeds and three ambush. Pretty self-exclamatory. A playset of Strikes. I think Strike has a little bit more value than uh, a card like Dimensional Barrier in this specific deck, simply because of the fact that you can actually remove the threats from board with Solemn Strike, whereas D-Barrier doesn't do that. And that way you can actually have really grindy games where you're literally just playing like Conahawk or like Rampangu plus Traps or something like being able to get monsters off the board with the traps that you're playing is actually just a really key asset. Um, it's one of the reasons why Steeds is so good, because it protects your monsters, and Solemn Strike kind of double, does double duty for that, so that's why I prefer it over Dimensional Barrier right now. But last trap in the deck is a copy of Macrocosmos, because, I mean, it's too good not to play um, at this point in time, especially against, like, Zoo. Uh, but the extra deck is pretty standard. Two Ulti Guy Peleos, two, or excuse me, three Ulti Peleos, one Ulti Conhot, because for some reason Konami thinks that's all that should be done to this deck. 
rather than just like letting it just keep going at full strength because this really does almost nothing. All it does is make Rampangu worse. Uh, two copies of Ulti Petalfin just so you can banish one off of uh, off of your uh, Rampangus and then still have one to float into off Winda. And then the Utopia package, Castell, Diamond Dire, Lightning Chidori, Emerald, and Dweller. Now these come up a lot more often than they did in the past because of Winda being a level 4 tamer, meaning that your tag outs of your fusions, as well as your ambush plays, can generate rank 4 plays, which is actually very, very good and very, uh, very premium for your game plans. Now some notable cards, uh, the Gold Sarks were in the build I played on the camera, but ultimately they just kind of suck, so they got cut. Same thing with Ritual Beast Return. This card just requires way too many resources. Now, it does turn some three-card combos like Elder, Rampangu, and Return into some really good you know, play strings because it allows you to still have two of your uh, Spiritual Beasts uh, like banished so that you can actually bring them back off of the tag out and stuff like that. But ultimately, it's just asking way too much uh, for the deck to try and compensate with. Um, so, like, it's just it's just not really that great. So, this, this is a card that quickly went from three down to two down to one and then down to none like I was actually really surprised at just how like bad this card is in practice whereas on paper it looks really good uh, but Winda seems to be the only actual like support card that actually mattered from Raging Tempest but anyway that's just the basics of my deck list uh, that I was going to be playing at a regional but I ended up not going to said regional for just obvious like changes of plans just just minor things that ultimately just caused me to just not go so let me know what you think in the comments down below and all that sort of nonsense. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, give it a like. If you want to support me, you can definitely like the video, subscribe. If you already haven't, share the video around. If you know some people that might like this sort of stuff, all that sort of stuff. If you want to support me directly, you can always go check out my Patreon link, which is on screen as well as in the description, and maybe consider pledging something even as little as a dollar to help support my channel's growth as well as equipment that is needing to be replaced, as well as possible streams in the future and stuff like that, as well as entering into monthly giveaways that I'm going to be doing. But other than that, thank you for watching as always. Thank you for your time as usual. Again, let me know what you guys think about this deck in the comments down below. And other than that, that is it for this video. Take care, guys. I will see you in the next video.